Hi, everyone. I'm Jody Schwann, the publisher of Sioux Falls Business. Welcome to another edition of Talent Thursday. Um, Denise Gazetta, our partner over at the Sioux Falls Development Foundation, who leads talent and workforce development, does such a good job scheduling these. It's always a little something different, different career stage, different industry. And that's the case again this week. Hi, Denise. Um, why don't you go ahead and introduce our guest? Well, our guest, we had a meeting back in December. It wasn't quite as well, it was very cold actually. Today is lovely compared to what it was like in December. But we were talking about company culture and I just really, you know, it resonated with me. I have a banking background myself. And so Jason um, Herbert is the uh, market president for First Bank and Trust. And so we are welcoming him today on our Talent Thursday. Happy to be here. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. It's It's been a while since Jason and I had a chance to catch up, um, but First Bank and Trust, um, first of all, for those of you who don't know, is a, a unique bank, very family-oriented, uh, South Dakota-oriented bank that has a growing presence in Sioux Falls. And, and Jason, you lead the Sioux Falls market. Um, how's your year going so far? It's hard to believe we're through the first quarter as of today, um, but you know, what has business been like? How is your team doing? Um, how's 2022 treating you guys so far? Yeah, that, that's a, a great question and a very open-ended question, uh, Jody. Uh, so I appreciate that big question. Uh, you know, it's going well uh, and it's going great. 2022 is off to a great start. Uh, First Bank and Trust is, is fortunate to uh, do business not only in Sioux Falls, but, uh, you know, we're in 22, uh, you know, we have 22 locations and roughly at 17 communities um, across South Dakota and Minnesota. And uh, we benefit from having the opportunity to do business in thriving communities like Sioux Falls. And um, I tell you, we, we uh, just like Sioux Falls is doing really well, we're doing really well. And it's the direct output of, uh, to, the, to the great city that we live in right now. But you know, when you talk about how the team is doing, uh, the, team is, the team is having a lot of fun, uh, no, no different than any other financial institution or company. Uh, we have similar challenges. Uh, we are we are faced with uh, with uh, with uh, a workforce uh, in in our communities that is tighter than what we would like to see it. Um, but uh, again, we're benefiting from the good communities that we're in, including Sioux Falls, and uh, we're having fun, growing, uh, and and doing so in a way that uh, we're still skipping the work. Okay, well, if you figured that out, gun on you. You're, yes. you're not going to have a workforce challenge for long. Um, right. <laughs> here. You know, I remember one of the last conversations I think I had with your bank was about this whole remote work, return to work, and, and you were taking a pretty progressive approach to that. How has that evolved for you? Are, are your people largely back in the office? Are you somewhere in between? What's that looking like? Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, we, we, um, we are back um, and have been back for, for a while now. Um, however, we, you know, we have approached it in a, in, in a way that frankly is the only way it can work, um, which is you have to be very mindful of the needs of your team members. And um, those needs differ by individual. Uh, and uh, so we are having, we have meaningful conversations with each of our team members to make sure that we're striking the right balance. And so we have people like myself who are in the office every day um, and folks that are, are working from home and working remotely completely. And then we have a host of, of team members that are in between. And we try to come up with the right recipe uh, that works for our team members and for the bank. And uh, we have been very pleased with, uh, with uh, how our team members have responded to that. Um, it's a, it's a, this is a family people first bank and, uh, and we reflect that in, in how we structure our, uh, um, our work-life balance. Yeah, I feel like, Denise, this is one of the themes that keeps coming up um, yes. with businesses. Do, do they come back to the office? What does that look like? How much flexibility do we offer? How do we manage it all? I mean, he's hitting on some good, I think, best practices here. Absolutely. And also really sharing about a culture um, that is really employee centric. And that's exactly what we see as being the formula for success, right? Um, people are choosing where, how, with whom to work. It's, it's different. And so, you know, we talk about a family organization and skipping to work, and that's really important. It's important to enjoy what you do. It's important to enjoy your colleagues and to really feel like you're connected to the bigger 
um, picture of the organization, what the organization's doing, the community. Um, and so it just across the board, like when I said, we, he hit it off with culture right in that meeting in December. It was just, I knew we had to get him on for the talent Thursday. I could talk culture all day. So however much time you want to spend on that. I, I was going to say, go right ahead. Often I hear from leaders, you know, they, they do love talking about it. They're like, I really wish you could hear from my employees about it because that's what, you know, that that's the voice that we want. Um, but um what do you, what have you focused on, you know, in trying to create the foundation, which is really what leaders do, um, that then breeds the culture that you're trying to, to cultivate within the organization? Yeah, thank you for the question, Jody. Um, where, where do I really begin? It, you know, we, the First Bank of Trust has been a family-owned organization for over 100 years, same family. Um, and uh, going back to their original founding, I mean, they're, there's one purpose and that is to drive the success of the community and that belief system. And I mean, it, it's a, it's a core belief. Uh, it has transcended um, through the generations and through the entire organizational chart of first bank of trust. First and foremost, if our community succeed, we succeed. And that's just how we operate. And uh, as somebody who is pretty idealistic, uh, when it comes to, uh, to people and community, um, we, we, uh, I, I love it here for that reason. Um, it, every day decisions are based first and foremost around what's best for the communities and to the, and for the customers. That's it. And, and that is not, um, always the case, um, in many organizations. Um, I think we benefit from being in a region and in a city that by and large, that is true. Um, we all live it and breathe it every single day. And that's in the DNA of Sioux Falls. And it's in the DNA of First Bank and Trust. Um, and uh, when you think about the workforce that is coming up, and I think this has been true for many generations, but particularly the generation that is really coming into place, place right now in the professional world, they want to work for something bigger than themselves. They, they want to be part of something bigger than themselves. So you can't fake it with them uh, and because sooner or later the, the core comes out and you just can't fake it with this generation. They want to be part of something bigger than themselves. And, uh, and that's why we are disciplined um, in making sure that we uh, stay true to the values that, I, that, I'm, that I'm discussing, community and people. It's the whole intersection, community, career and cause. And it's exactly, I mean, people, they're showing up to work they're bringing their entire self. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I listened to a podcast and Jason, you were on it. And you talked about that, that your employees are human beings. And so they're bringing their whole self in. And that is absolutely um, the direction. If you, if you look at society and the way we're changing and the work preferences for change um, by generation, right? And, and how people are taking a look at um, their behavioral health, their mental health, their financial health, right? All of that is, is open for discussion and, and people are bringing that into the workplace. And it's nice when employers understand and they embrace it. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. You know, Jason, we have a number of college students who watch um, Talent Thursday. I know we have parents um, who watch it too. Yeah. You know, if you're a student or a parent of a student um, that's looking at banking, that's looking at finance, that's wondering, you know, how do I prepare? What classes should I be taking? You know, do I have mm -hmm. internship opportunities? Uh, what's your advice there? Great question. Literally an hour ago, I was just kind of roaming the halls in our downtown location. And I ended up in a conversation with somebody in our, in our uh, wealth management division. And um, the to this topic honestly came up. Um, crazy that you brought it up just now. Um, you know, on the question of classes and what banking or finance is, finance is about helping people help themselves to achieve their goals and dreams and aspirations, which involve, in its reality, money and finance. That's part of the deal. That's not the entire recipe, but it is a major part of the deal. And, um, Yes, you need to have some business chops. You have to understand, you know, there's basic rules of accounting and finance that yes, you absolutely have to understand. But if I am looking at uh, hiring somebody on our team 
it's as important, if not more important, that they have a background in just how just working with people, whether that's psychology, philosophy, mm-hmm. um, just being able to relate to other human beings, and empathy and demonstrate empathy in a real way is so, so important. Um, and when you think of all the, the craziness that exists in the world, um, the ability to interact and show empathy and be with people and understand their needs and their aspirations um, is, I'm telling you, that is the, that's, that's where it's at. That is where it's at. So it sounds like there are multiple paths is what you are saying. Yes, but, the, but there's an intersection with just the, uh, the, the being able to relate to people. Um, it doesn't matter if you're just working with customers, um, even if you're, you're working in, in a function that is not client facing, you're still interacting with people and, uh, and being able to work with people in a real way. Uh, it's just, it's critical. It's critical. Having high emotional intelligence is, is wonderful. I mean, that's, that's one of the things we're seeing with a lot of colleges they're focusing in on, on some of these things where they're talking about just what Jason is articulating the need to, to show empathy, to be able to problem solve, um, we're dealing with people in their lives and they're coming to us sometimes in the most vulnerable ways and asking for help and being able to connect and, and make them feel appreciated valued um, is so important. So that's absolutely. Well, it is talent Thursday. I want to give you a chance to talk about your talent needs because I know you've referenced, you have them. So uh, what kind of opportunities do you have at first bank and trust right now? And um, what kind of folks are you looking for? All of the above, Jody. Uh, when it comes to our needs, uh, un- uh, we're not unlike other organizations. Um, but I'll I'll just I'll just kind of talk about you know people that have a background in technology, uh, data science um, is is critical. Uh, that's uh, those are some positions that that are not only open here but open elsewhere. But yes, we we could certainly use uh, team members that are that have background in technology and data science. Um, human resources um, is, is another key area, um, recruitment. Uh, this, the labor market is probably not gonna change in the near term. Um, and even when it does, um, having, having good HR professionals, and we have a great HR team right now, but we need more of them. Um, and so, uh, so that's another area. Uh, we always we always need um, bankers in business banking, retail banking, our wealth management services, um, compliance. Uh, that is something that is is important. We we look we take compliance very seriously here. Um, it's it's a duty. It's not just a responsibility, but it's a duty to, to do things in a proper way. And so we really are. We also seek out top notch uh, compliance professionals in the market too. So truly a little bit of everything. Um, of, yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing, do we send them to your website? Is it Bank Easy still? Yes, www.bankeasy.com. Perfect. Yeah. Can't be simpler than that. Bank Easy, I'm sure the career section is right there. Um, it is. And, you know, we've got a lot of young talent. We've got new grads. I'm sure, do you have opportunities for new college grads? We do. Um, we do, we do, we do. Uh, we also have an internship program. And, um, and we, uh, we bring in interns uh, each summer. Uh, and uh, I tell you, we have fantastic interns every year. Uh, and uh, and when it, whenever it works out, we can we would love to have them stay on um, after that. Uh, so that's that. And then uh, yes, I mean, you know, there are plenty of positions on our website uh, that would be appropriate uh, for uh, for college students to apply for. And uh, we 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 know that the market. Um, is in demand of, of top college students or whatever university or technical institution that they went to. Um, so uh, yeah, go to that website, plenty of opportunities. And um, if they just want to talk to somebody, you can give them my cell phone number. Oh my goodness. I, that might be the first time we've had a, an executive right. do this on the show. <laughs> it's totally up to you. Again. It's culture. <laughs> I was going to say, they can reach out to Denise too. You can always do that. I'm trying to get connected. She's Denise G at Um, 
Now, this was great. Um, we do try to keep these relatively brief, so uh, we could talk all day, I am sure. But um, Denise, any final thoughts um, that you were hoping here that we would be able to share with Jason? No, I, I just I want to thank Jason for his time and, and all the energy inside our wonderful community. He's involved in so many different boards. And it's nice because, you know, as I have children, you have children, all of these kids, and we talk about them, our students, they're kind of like all of our community children. This is really a wonderful ecosystem. You know, earlier we talked a little bit about the Sioux Falls Advantage and how just inclusive we are. So yes. I would say anybody that's watching this, just go online and check out, you know, First Bank and Trust and connect with us. That's wonderful. We also want to make sure that we get people over to our website and so they can learn more about the talent and workforce programming that we do mm -hmm. because we're really lucky here. We have great businesses that come alongside and partner with us in amazing ways. So check us out at SiouxFalls.com, um, the Development Foundation site. And, and go to Talent and Workforce page, and you'll find lots and lots of information, including a lot of stuff that Jody has designed and created for us, which just showcases beautifully all the program. That's right, more to come, um, but it's always good uh, catching up. Uh, again, Jason Herbold, he is leading the Sioux Falls market over at First Bank and Trust. If you wanna get connected, you can find them at bankeasy.com. Um, Jason, again, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate being able to catch up with you and the fact that you have all those opportunities to offer um, to people out there in the workforce. So make sure you're taking advantage of those and then come back next week. We will have, right, Denise, I think, right? Uh, another edition of Talent Thursday. So we'll look forward to seeing you then. Thanks very much. Have a good rest of the day. Hey, everybody. Bye.